YouTube and welcome to this episode of the Gunman Raw. So a lot of people have been enjoying extra videos on this channel so I thought I'd do another one. Got a few things I would like to have a bit of a chat about so pretty small job we've got here today. Um, just a little spot repair on the front bumper, nothing special, just a Hyundai i20 and then we've got a brand new rear bumper there to do. So um, it's literally first thing in the morning, I've just got to work here today and um, Let's get straight into it. So I prepped the job up last night. I've already got the colors sorted. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna start off by giving the bumper a bit of a clean down. I'm gonna use some water cleaner. So I've got water and prep sole. I like to use the water cleaner prior to masking. And then I'll use the prep sole prior to painting. So you may notice I haven't actually put any primer on there yet. I decided to use the non-sanding or wet on wet primer my american viewers will call it sealer that's what they call it over there we just call it wet on wet over here um so yeah i've decided to just use that over these repairs so with this repair like it was just scraped um there was one or two spots that i did have to fill up with some of my body filler um but apart from that, it, it was really not that bad. So I was able to sand it back down and I finished it off wet with like 1200 grit wet sandpaper. So that that actually means that it leaves you with a very smooth finish. So I've found that when you finish it off dry, um, it, it can be like a little bit furry. It can leave you like with a bit of a furry finish that when you do go to prime or paint over it, um, you'll see these little furry bits on your um, on a three-year repair so that's why it's very smooth because I finish it off wet I can even just feel it like it just feels nice and smooth but as I say I'm still going to do some wet on wet primer on it so that's going to give me a chance if something does come up I can just give it a light scuff anyway let's get into the masking so yeah um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about is um, you, you, some people may notice that I've changed a little bit and, and the way that I do my reviews may change in, in, um, as a result of that, but um, I'm in a different place now. I'm, um, look, don't, don't get me wrong, like I haven't forgotten my roots, I, you know, I haven't changed too much, but um, just some of my opinions on, just in generally in life have actually changed. So, um, look, I used to go pretty hard on the, the high-end spray guns, the expensive ones, um, and specifically the Sata Jets, because um, a big part of what, what happens with those Sata Jets is you, you get this elitist mentality among some of the, the people that use them, you know what I mean? And I know that, like that's just 100% true, like, and I reject that, I hate elitist attitude, like, you even get that kind of elitist attitude at some body shops, believe it or not. Like it sounds insane um, that just because you paint <laughs> like a nice car, you would think that you're better than anybody else. And, and that's what I like about this shop here. It's just an everyday shop. Like, I mean, I'm not, uh, and I never will be above painting a bloody everyday person's car. Like. It's a Hyundai, you know, I, I'm not above that. I'm not better than that. And I never will be better than that. Like I'm, yeah, like <laughs> I'm an average everyday working class dude. And that, yeah, I don't know. Like how you think you're better than everybody else just because you paint a Bentley or a Maserati or whatever the hell it is, man. Like you really need to pop your head and just get out of your, you know, get out of your stupid little um, imaginary world. Cause you're not, you know. Um, but yeah, like all that aside, I, I've, that's why a, a part of the reason why I didn't like Sada. And then on the other hand, there, there's a few design. I see them as design flaws, like things that I didn't like about them. But um, I recently got a uh, Sada X5500, and at this shop we do candy resprays. And I tell you what, that gun. Uh, I've used quite a few of the different guns that I've got for the candy resprays, and that X5500 is the best gun I've got for the candy. It's got the biggest fan. <coughs> and it, it's got the most even fan and it just seems to get the candy down more even than any of the other guns I've got so you know uh, at the end of the day look the, the other side of it is like 
once you buy it, you know what I mean? Like, you don't have to buy the gun twice, you know? So if you are doing jobs like that, if you're, if you're doing high-end vehicles, you know what I mean? <coughs> like, <coughs> I did a review on that gun, and in that video, uh, Sorry about that, somebody just came in to ask me something. Um, <coughs> where was I? So, yeah, in that video, <coughs> I painted a BMW X6 competition, right? So, uh, down the side of that car, you know, that car's probably a... Huh, I think he told me, $350,000 car, you know? So, if, if you can't use a $1,000 or $1,200 gun on that, then what are you going to use it on, you know what I mean? And if it is better, if it actually does, even if it's like a 5 or... 3% improvement on the other guns, then it's probably still worth it, you know what I mean? But that's not being elitist. Like, there's nothing to say that I couldn't do that with the other guns, but I don't know, I'm just at the point now where I'm like, yeah, if I can see any, if I, I'm just gonna use the right tool for the job. And as I say, like, once you buy it, you don't have to buy it twice, you know? So um, that's the way I'm looking at it with even the DV1S, you know, I'm, I'm definitely gonna, which is a spot repair gun. Um, I don't even think I'm going to use it for this. We'll see how we go, because I've got to paint that rear bumper there too, so no use in going two guns. There's nothing to stop me from painting that with a full-size gun. Um, but, yeah, as I say, like, I'm on actually really good money as well, you know, so I don't know. But back over there in Perth, it, it seems like I used to work heaps harder for less money. And a big part of the reason I had to work harder is because the... The shop wasn't organized very well and it's one of those things that you didn't you don't kind of realize how poorly it was um managed i guess and no no offense to my bosses i love them they're, they're great people you know so i'm not definitely not trying to shit on them or any of my ex-workmates you know it's just um like this shop that i'm working in here has a, a workshop floor manager he's actually like sort of the boss the owners uh the owner's nephew, I think, that's how it works, yeah, so. He's a bit of a family-run business, which is kind of good. And because because he's kind of family, he doesn't have that ego. And, like, he's actually not a painter or a panel beater. He started off working here as a detailer out the back and doing um, washing cars and doing the, the, the buffing and polishing stage. So, um, he doesn't have that ego, which a lot of, a lot of foremans can get. And trust me, I've worked in a lot of shops, so. I really do appreciate it when I've got someone that just helps out on the floor and helps the workflow. So I guess his idea is to keep me painting, keep me doing what I'm good at, you know? Like I know I'm, I'm, I'm doing things that certain other people can't do. Like I know how to do the color matching, I know how to do the spraying, the masking and the prep work. So he just keeps me at doing those tasks, the things that I am best at, which just seems to make sense without the micromanaging without the always looking over your shoulder without the ego of I'm better than you you don't know anything so yeah I really am very happy here um, and actually in another video I've got to talk about something about um I actually I nearly started up my own body shop again and I tell you what all I'll say now is I'm glad I didn't um, but yeah what else are we talking about yeah so look I'm on really good money here and look I at that point in my life back over there in Perth, I felt like, and this is all just my my own feelings, right? So I felt like I couldn't keep that pace up forever. So I felt as if I had to make as much money as I could so that I could relax, you know what I mean? I just felt this trade was just burning me out and I felt like I needed to, needed to relax, if you know what I mean. But now, like, I, I feel as if this is gonna be sustainable, you know what I mean? Like I've actually gone and got into a shop where I like I don't feel as if I need to save, say 70% of my paycheck every week, which is what I used to. Like I used to be such a bloody tight ass, like such a tight ass that I wouldn't even buy a coffee on the weekend. That's I'm not even exaggerating, you know what I mean? Like I would literally, um, I used to buy a, a coffee every Saturday and then I sat down and I'm like, oh, that's like $5.50 for a coffee. And if I, if I don't buy that each week, well then I'm gonna save myself like 500 bucks a year or something like that. That's legit how much of a bloody tight ass I was. So, and, and you know, that, I, I'm explaining that to you because that must have, um, you know, flowed through to the way I did spray gun reviews and, and yeah, the, the way I approached my YouTube channel. So, and, and that's great, because I actually do know that like, people like saving money and a big, like if you do, um, a, a 
wow, best cheap spray gun review. People love that, you know what I mean? Especially on YouTube, they love, people that are on YouTube seem to love saving a buck, you know what I mean? If they can watch your video, um, and, and then figure out how they can save a dollar, then that's that's what they're there on. That's, yeah. You know, you're gonna, I, I would say, you're gonna get more on that than a, this is the best, most elite spray gun, you know what I mean? That's, yeah, from my perspective anyway. But, as I say, like, so, I hope that makes sense to you, and I hope that can sort of put in context why I'm not going as hard on SADA. It's definitely not any, um, elitist attitude because I hate that shit. Yeah, I always have hated that shit. And as I say, like, I'm not, not naming names or anything, but like, yeah, I've, I've worked with painters who straight up, it's gone to their head, man. It goes to their head. Like, like, dude, pull your head out of your bloody ass. Like, you know, you, you're just painting cars. At the end of the day, like, that's a panel. That's like a, oh, this is a square. That's a square. That's a red square, you know? That square could be on a Hyundai or a bloody um, Maserati or a Porsche or a Mazda. It doesn't matter, man. It's a red square. If you can do that red square perfectly, you can do it on any car. And it's like, man, what's, it's just a canvas. It's like, it doesn't, I don't know. Like, just get over yourself, basically, to those painters who think they're so much better than everyone else because they work on a certain brand of cars. Kind of, yeah, it's strange, man. Strange the mentality of some people. So, one of the other things I was going to talk about is PPG, um, and I'm not going to lie, it's definitely not my favourite paint system, but it does the job, you know? Um, it's definitely not bottom of the line, um, I would say bottom of the line are things like Concept No Mix and stuff like that, Concept Paints. I can't believe I used to like them. I mean, when I had my own shop, I actually had one of their systems in, and it was like it was actually all right for like cheap resprays. But yeah, like there were certain colors that you just could not get. Like the sparkle wasn't there in the metallic, if you know what I mean. Like you would literally not be able to sort of color match certain colors. Um, and I'm not exaggerating. I'm not just saying, oh, you need to put a bit more of this color in. Like you would legit not be able to actually match it because. The, the, the effect is not there in the colors to get some of those, um, like Zeralex and some of the, yeah, the, the better, you know, good looking effect colors. So, um, I, you know, I, I don't want that to be the case. There is Australian made paint. I would, I would love to support an Aussie made, um, you know, product, but it's just the truth of the matter. It's, it's really not that good paint. Um, so yeah, in saying that, PBG, it's middle of the line. It's not top of the line. I would definitely say um, Stando or Standox, the Axalta systems are top of the line. They're probably the, the best of the current generation of what's, what's around at the moment. Um, and look, I've never used Sickens. I've heard sort of mixed reviews on it. Some people say it's great. Some people say mint. Um, but yeah, like this, is, the colours definitely aren't as good on PPG as um, Standox. Like it's a strange one. Sometimes you'll just get these colours and like, you'll have seven or eight bloody colour chips and none of them will be right. <laughs> it's like, with Standox, like you might have a few, but at least one of them will be right to the car. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, with, with PPG, it's like, well, this colour didn't even have any colour chips. It can't be that. And they're not that much of a um, uncommon car. It's a pretty common car, I would say. Um, anyway, all that aside, let's continue on with the job. Still been enjoying using my um, microfiber cloths. They're actually really, really good. Um, so what I'm doing now, uh, actually, that, that's the water one, isn't it? The blue one, yeah. So this is actually the way I've been getting my bumpers ready, and it's been working really well. So. Over the years, I've sort of struggled sometimes on and off, you know, not big time, but you can struggle to find yourself a good system to get new bumpers without static in them. So sometimes you'll you just get that little bit of static jump up in them and then um, all of the dust in the workshop will um, be attracted to the bumper. So, all the dust in the paint booth, I mean. So this is what I do, water cleaner. So that's like, um, Basically methylated spirits mixed with demineralized water. Um, 
So obviously before I brought it in here, I, I, I prepped it up, um, gave it a good blow down, and yeah, now we're in here, wiping it down with the water cleaner and the microfiber cloth. And from there, literally all I do, air blower, high pressured air blower, and then put the wet on wet primer straight down. So the wet on wet primer I'm using is actually a plastic mix. So there's an additive that you put into it to make it stick straight to the plastic. So I don't actually have to put a specific plastic primer down because it's mixed in with the wet on wet. They actually didn't have that at this shop until I started here. They always, and the other guys, they, don't, they still don't even do this. It's, I'm the only one that does it. It doesn't, I don't know, doesn't seem right to me to use two. If you've got the choice to just put one thing down, why would you put two down, you know? Because so what they would do is, yeah, plastic primer and then wet on wet. So yeah, you can mix, if you use the right product, you can mix it all in, in the one. Now, one thing we've got to be careful of here is wet on wet overspray on my blend areas. So we're going to give them a bit of a mask up. Now, Prepsol can bring up the static in these kind of bumpers. So we do have to be careful of that. We might end up having to give it another water cleaner. It actually feels all right. You can usually feel it in your arm. Um, I've had a few people, I don't know, I've, I've never done it, but I started to see them online actually. I've seen some people using those static, anti-static guns. I don't know, if you've used one, if you've got opinions on it, be sure to let me know in the comments. But I've never used one, and as I say, I've sort of hit, heard mixed results on it. Some people swear by them, some say it's a bit of a gimmick. So as I say, next up with the bumper, this is all I do. So just high pressure, like ultra high pressure, went with one of these things. Like I won't even tack rag that. I found if you, as soon as you start rubbing it and tack ragging it, that that static will come back up in the part. So here we are. Yeah, we've got an old tack rag in here. Something that will do the job. Yeah, that's not too dirty. Should work. I'll give us a tack rag now. edges up and then in a minute I'll go and mix up my plastic wet on wet so might even go something like this just to keep it well away and I'm I'm deliberately doing that hard edge I'm sort of going to keep away from it where possible and need be, I'm happy to give that edge a scuff. If we do end up with a bit of overspray there, I'll give that a light sand if I do need to. But I really don't want any of that overspray up there at all because it's just gonna be clear over that section. Um, I might even do a bit of a false edge, just sort of soften the edge a little bit if there is one there. mix up that plastic wet on wet and I'll see you back here in a minute. Radio guys, straight into it, got that wet on wet in the gun. <clears throat> this is actually my wet on wet gun. So the Segola 4600 Extreme, it's a 1.3 XL fluid tip and the Titania, DVR Titania air cap.
got the boost down to 20 degrees Celsius and as soon as I get it down, I'll walk straight out and crank it up to 30 degrees so that we can get this primer drying as soon as possible and I don't have to waste too much time waiting. But what I probably will do is um, go and scout out my next job and kill five or ten minutes there, find my next job and start looking at the colour for that next job. I need to turn that pressure down a bit. Now to say, hopefully we're not going to have to sand any of this and I'll have a look. Nah, it's actually looking pretty damn good, nice and smooth. But sometimes, as I was saying before, you can have some sort of, some furriness. Um, so what we're going to do now, this is just straight up thinners, just thinners, inside this gun. So I'm going to spray a bit of that over the edge to help with uh, any possible profiling. And then I'll just help melt that edge in where the wet on wet stops. Looking good, you can see how it's just sort of melted it in and when that dries, it'll be nice and smooth the whole way across. That should be just fine. And yeah, that's actually looking quite good there, nice, very nice and smooth. Radio guys, we'll see you back here in, oh no, 10 or 15 minutes. Radio guys, let's keep moving on with this job here. So, well, I have to get, I have to go out and do a few touch-ups for the bus. Um, work a little bit of magic. I have to make a touch-up look like it had been painted. So I did like a touch-up and then filled it in with super glue, got the heat gun on it down the back, buffed it up, and it looks pretty damn good. So, we've had a nice amount of flash off time. Um, I'd say minimum 25 minutes, but here we are, ready to put our base coat down. So, um, yeah, like, we're, we're using the PPT as I said, and the coverage isn't that great with this system. Um, if, if this was Stando Blue, one and a half coats and you'd be covered. Hold on, I've probably got that set on. Yeah. So with, with, stand -o, oh, with this system, sorry, not stand -o, with this system, I change the setting each coat. So first coat I go um, full fluid, 25 psi, and full fan. I leave, oh, it's actually, sorry, it's half a turn in with the fan. And I actually, I've been doing that lately. Um, and then each coat I will drop the pressure by 5 psi and um, wind the fluid in half a turn unless it needs an extra coat so if it needs an extra coat for coverage I'll put the extra coat on with the, the first coat setting if that makes sense um, and if that's the coverage but if, if I need to put an extra coat on for for like muscle I'll leave it at third coat setting. I hope that makes sense. So first coat is 25 psi, second coat 20 psi, third coat say 15 to 17 psi, um, and first coat is full fluid. So what you do with full fluid is, I'll show you. I'll do it upside down so I don't make a mess. Um, so we go, you wind that in until you can start feeling it. Um, so you wind it out, and you wind it in until you can start feeling it. I can feel there, that's starting to pull the trigger. So you can see there, that's starting to push the trigger out. So you wind it in until you feel resistance. That is full fluid. And then, so first coat, full fluid. Second coat, half a turn in. And third coat, another half a turn in. Um, so yeah, first coat, still doing on this bumper, so we'll wind it right back out. And I might even turn that pressure down just so we can keep that colour contained. Now luckily our colour is actually covering quite well over this coloured primer. G5 is like the mid-grey. Yeah, uh, it's 
look at that. We probably won't even need need that many guns for this job. I bought it in in case I thought we were going to need it, but that's just fine. No use in having another gun to clean out. That's one good thing about the PPS. If I did need that, I could just unclip that, put that straight on, and off you go. Um, there are some times where you do need to do funny little things like that for whatever reason. Put these in there, get my air blower, and I noticed, I don't know if it's like an eyelash, it looks like a little hair. It's like a little bit of fluff here, so I'd have to dry it out and get that a scuff out. That's, that's gigantic. Anyway, I'll turn the camera off in between posts. Radio continuing on with this job. Um, what I did do, I decided it wasn't worth turning the camera back on for a quick coat over these edges. But what I did, I dried the edges off first. I then put a quick extra coat um, at the first setting. So the settings that I do for my first coat. Just to make sure it's covered because, um, yeah, as I say, these reds really don't cover that well. So now on to our second coat. Drop that pressure down 20 psi. Wind the fluid in half a turn. Yeah, like this looks covered, but it only looks covered because it went over a good coloured ground coat, but it's actually still not covered yet. Um, and I know that because I did do some spray out colours to this colour. Uh, as I said, I think I said it previously that there was no colour tip for this colour. So I did spray it out. Um, and when I sprayed it out, I, I sort of took note of how well it covered. And I found that an extra coat is what it needed. A good little spot repair man, nothing wrong with a good little spot repair. And um, that's one thing I love about this shop here, we do a good mixture of cars. So, yeah, as I was saying earlier in this video, like I did a, a BMW X6 brand new, like $350,000 car, but then I'll do a car like this and I like that. And everything in between there. We've got a bloody Bentley out there, you know, it's like Maserati, BMW. Mercedes, but then also do this Dodge. And look at the size of this bloody boot, man! It's like my palace. Woohoo! All right, it's easy for the third coat. Radio guys, time for the last coat. Pretty simple, straightforward. Same thing as I said. Drop it by about five psi. Probably, probably seventeen psi for a, a darker color. Um, and wind that fluid in another half a turn. And this is our effects coat. So this is going to make the metallic stand up nicely. Now this coat here, because it's going on so dry, I found a lot of the time I don't even need to blow dry it. So I'll just put this last coat down. By the time I've gone and mixed up my clear, That'll be right to clear over, you know what I mean? So, because we've dried the, the other coats are the wet coats, the coverage coats, the last coat's really just the effect coat, drop coat, call it what you will. We'll do a little clear blend up here. Job done, mate. I'll see you in here in a few minutes. Which clear gun am I going to use? I don't know. We'll see. Radio guys, so here we are, ready to put that clear coat down. I guess we should talk about this blend for a minute. Um, so, it's pretty straightforward really. Um, that's not framed properly. Yeah, that's not framed properly. Must have been a bit of clear caught up in there or something. That can happen. It actually wasn't that uncommon on these old guns. They'd get a little bit of something usually caught up in between there. See if that fixes it. That's most of the time when these do that. There's something up there in the air cup. Hopefully that's done it. It's still 
on the rain crime flat right. I can't be bothered fixing it, I'm just gonna get another gun. This is the beauty of having so many guns. So this is my office. Have a look at this mate. Aren't I bloody lucky? I really am very appreciative of working in such a ripper workshop here. I'll tell you what, look at that. Pop swap. Bang. There we go, there's all my guns, this is my area, computer, mixing, right next to the spray booth. Um, yeah, so the blend, that's where we were. Um, yeah, Pro Light's a better gun anyway, it really is. Pro Light's better than the GGI's for sure. Crank it up to two bar, is it? That feels like, yeah, that wasn't, that actually wasn't full fluid, uh, yeah, for whatever reason. So, we'll do a little bit of attack round here. So yeah, it really is pretty straightforward with these blends. Now, when I was doing my prep work, I actually polished here, so it's nice, fresh, clean paint. So I'm not blending over any dirt or grime or anything like that. Um, and then I use one of my 1000 grit grippy pads, and I'm just gonna bring my clear coat up to here, approximately, and then I'm just gonna put that fade out thinner over the edge. And then all we do later, we get our buff, and we buff it in and it will disappear. So it really is that that simple. So the key is uh, stopping your clear at the right spot. You don't want you, you don't want your clear to go all the way over the sanding scratches, because then your peel's gonna uh, your clear is gonna peel back. So you want to sort of go halfway up around this area with your clear, and then your um, your fade out center up to the edge. So let's do this first then. So there's no need to put your, don't start doing your blend on your first coat. Just bring it a little bit back on your first coat. So you're sort of staggering it down on, as you go. Now, I'm actually using up this old clear that they've had sitting around for a while. I'm just, it's, it's actually called Vibrant, TPG Vibrant Clear. It's, um, it's like it's their custom clear. It's part of the Vibrant range, which is like PPG's um, custom, custom paint range. Uh, because we ran out of the 136, so my boss was sort of trying a couple of different clears. Ultimately, I'm not the biggest fan of it. Um, so, but we've just got some, some sitting there, so I'm just using it up. That's all. But the only downside is that it's got slow hardener in it, so... I'm going to go clean those guns out and we need to wait for this to... See, that's actually drying nice. I put a little bit of rocket in there and I used the fast reducer, so that's kind of cancelling out the fact that it's so slow. That'll, that'll work fine, actually. Um, yeah, I'll go clean out the base coat gun and clean out that GTI that didn't want to spray. And I'll be back here in a few minutes, guys. Woo! Rightio, guys. Time to put that last coat of clear coat down. So... I cleaned the guns out. It's probably been about five minutes. Let's see how we're going. Oh yeah, that's that's basically touch dry already. Well, the rocket and the fast fast reducer has done its job, so that's good. Because as I said, we got we got slow slow hard enough. So to counteract that, I used a bit of yeah fast fast reducer and rocket. That'll be totally fine. As I say, just take note of where I've sanded to. I've sanded to here. I'm gonna clear sort of halfway up there and then put the the fade out thinner. So yeah, you, you can you can actually swap that fade out thinner just for normal thinners. But if you're going to swap it out for normal thinners, what you should do is like add a little bit of clear to it. Like a little bit of this clear. Sort of, I don't know, like maybe 10 or 15 percent clear with it. Um, and it sort of, it just makes it blend out a little bit nicer. Now the stage has got to come halfway up there. You see these are still our sanding scratches. So we've, we haven't actually gone all the way over the sanding scratches. So all of that clear is going to stick. But there's a little bit of overspray. And then that, that gun needs a bit of a clean out too. But it'll, it'll be good enough. It'll work. I'll have to give that a clean out. I haven't used this gun for a while. 
We actually don't do anywhere near as many spot repairs here than what we did at my previous shop. I should do like myself with a little spotty. So that's it. And now it looks a little bit funky now, but that should sort of melt down. We'll get the mini buff onto it, and that'll be just fine. Um, the next thing I'd like to do is pull those bolt edges off. So yeah, pull that off um, after doing the clear coat stage. And then that one too. Nice and neat spot repair, man. Two little buff up and we're done. Um, now we'll clear that bumper. Um, that false edge masking. Jeez, am I going to have enough? 
probably just have enough. Um, I have to read it, it's false, but you stay there, don't fall off. Yeah. 